thanks thanks so much for for joining us here mike um and thanks to everyone for uh for jumping in on this talk um looks like there's already some activity going on in the chat and um before we get started just wanted to mention like you can uh throw in some questions any questions you have for mike in the chat we'll try to address them um uh, as we go along and there's like also a little feature that i can highlight and mike you'll see like a little banner <laughs> that goes in at the bottom of the uh, the session here and if anyone like sees a question that uh they want uh to upvote you can put emojis and use emojis uh, looks like the group is already doing that so you get how things work in this modern webinar uh tech stack so um <laughs> So let me uh, let me introduce our our uh, wonderful guest Mike Rizzo, who's the uh, 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 founder of Marketing Ops in the Marketing Ops community, and has tons of experience in marketing ops. Um, and uh, and we're just really uh, pleased to have you, Mike. And um, I think one thing you wanted to uh, just start off with, because um, actually my background is in marketing ops, and that's how I got started in like all things marketing. And you know, I, I like to nice. start with the origin story because it's usually like a circuitous route to like get to where you are. So I wanted to like just uh, get that context from you and like how did you get into this world? Because I'm guessing you didn't like start uh, with a college degree with on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only there were more college degree like classes that were related to the modern marketing uh, world, particularly B2B, but there's just not enough. Uh, so definitely did not pick that up in college. Um, yeah, funny enough, I, I literally just like wrote out this rather long narrative about this uh, journey I've been on uh, just just this weekend. I just I don't know why I felt like I wanted to like write that out. Um, but my start in in marketing uh, in general was in ad tech. So I was working for a company called Specific Media at the time. I was working on the ad trafficking side, which means you get to code ads to go to the ad server. Um, and then get deployed out on all that inventory. So whenever you've been on, you know, websites uh, that have all those banner ads and stuff, those are real-time bidding sort of environments. And uh, some company out there, like a specific media, sort of powers that uh, d delivery of the the ad itself and the targeting. And so, uh, really, what that experience taught me was that code was not that scary. Um, and uh, and you know because I was learning like how to sort of tweak the the assets in HTML to make sure that they fit our ad server needs and, and these kinds of things and um, that pushed me along down the path of okay well I'm gonna try to figure out how to build emails and websites and like where do you go then, from here like yeah from traffic to like the next step kind of thing yeah like once you once you start understanding the landscape of uh, Martech particularly like advertising, you quickly learn a lot about retargeting, pixels, cookie, you know, all the things, right? And uh, and then so I went into this world of, oh, email marketing, et cetera, um, picked up my first job as like a marketing coordinator, which was really like, they hired me to say, hey, figure out to, how to send a monthly newsletter. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, I'll try to figure that out. Uh, yeah. And then I, I ended up that particular company, um, I migrated them from Salesforce to Sugar CRM, um, wow. which, which was a good move at the time because they were bootstrapping their way back to, to you know, not dying on the vine. Basically, they were trying to, to survive. Um, they are now very well off, not because of anything I did, but they made their made their way back into the market. Um, but we also had Pardot, and Pardot got acquired by Salesforce at the time. Um, so all of a sudden I had to <laughs> switch back off. In. <laughs> I was like, oh crap. And so I had to switch off of Pardot because it wasn't going to be supported, right? The integration to Sugar. And so I migrated to Acton. So like in one company, I had these like dual migration things happening, which quickly turns you into a marketing operations oh, yeah. person, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that was sort of my journey. I ended up in a SaaS company. We didn't even call it a SaaS company at that time. It was like, like off-prem like, off -prem. like <laughs> it was off-prem servers <laughs> yeah i had a uh, i had a similar route where it was just like oh uh we want to do we want to send out this newsletter but i essentially joined a company and they're like okay you seem like competent enough like we bought this thing called marketo like figure out how to make it work and like that was kind of like yeah. a route into marketing ops and but that was you know 15 years ago or you know, at least a dozen years ago. So things have changed quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Most of the people in our community, um, you know, we run a podcast and we have that similar sort of line of questioning where we'll talk about, tell us about your journey. And most of us, we fall into it, right? Like 
Like we, we don't even realize we're doing marketing ops and all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's what this is called. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, at least there's like nomenclature for it now where yeah. as like, you know, that, that long ago there was like not, it was like you're oh, a marketing yeah. associate or whatever, some sort of yeah. like marketing there was X no role. Name. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think uh, one, one area I want to get into too is just like the nomenclature around the community side of things, um, which we'll get into a little bit later. But um, uh, I, th- I think one like the next kind of step is like okay how did you how did you relay from you know i'm doing all this marketing stuff marketing ops stuff uh and then like relaying that into like oh i want to we we need to build a community for this like there's there's not like representation for this role and you know it's i know from your background like people are pulling you into but if you could talk a little bit about that journey too i think it'd be interesting for the group here yeah for sure um you know the reality is um I, I had no intention of building a community at any point during, during the time where I had started what is now the Slack community. Um, it was 2017 and Slack was still sort of, a, you know, coming onto the scene, right? We were, we were dealing with like HipChat and a few other tools that were out mm-hmm. in the market. Um, and our own startup company that I was working at was still wavering on, do we, should we try this Slack thing or whatever? Um, you know, I was going to these conferences like Dreamfort, you know, we got all of them. The big three are happening these this month, right? Yeah, it's very much conference uh, season right now. I'm feeling the burn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, and and I was going to these events, meeting people, and I was super alone in my role, right? And uh, I was just like, Because hey, usually like, it's one marketing ops per- person at any company uh, for, yeah. Yeah, it's usually how it goes, right? And um, unfortunately, that means that whenever you have a problem, like you're either Googling, uh, most of the time you're Googling to your heart's content to try to figure out how to solve your problem, or you try to go talk to somebody else and their eyes are kind of like, I have no idea what you're saying. (laughs) I don't even understand what your problem is. Um, And so I'd started this little thing on Slack, wrote a blog post about it. And um, eventually people kept finding that post in 2019 I got like a really large uptick in, hey, can I join? Hey, can I join? And I was like, I don't, what's happening here? <laughs> like, this is very strange. Um, and so I, you know, being in automation, I was like, okay, let's let's find a way to sort of automate the invite flow a little bit more. Um, and we did. Very, very, very typical mar- marketing ops person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, this there. is not scalable. Like I can't do one-to-one invites. Uh, and so I did that and I did a little little post about it on LinkedIn. Um, and it got picked up by a couple of uh, very popular, uh, talented marketing operations professionals, specifically like Sarah McNamara. Um, she she reshared that, and all that that sort of cascaded into lots of people finding it. And we've been growing at 120 people a month in Slack since then. Wow! Um, wow. And so, what are you at right now in that community? We have 46 over 4,600 uh, wow. folks in Slack right now, which is a lot of fun. Um, and we don't, you know, we, we focus on value. So, you know, the the people keep coming. (laughs) So they, there's still some value clearly. (laughs) Um, and we're not paying to acquire these folks into the channel, right? It's a free environment for them to spend time in. Um, And so if, you know, if it suits their needs, which I hope that it does, um, then, you know, we keep, we keep focusing on that piece. So. Yeah, the the what what came to fruition is is really like I had no intention of creating a community. However, I had been pulled back to that uh, initial startup that I where I started this this channel when I was that person of one, that team of one mm-hmm. in marketing ops. I was at Mavenlink, and I got pulled back to them. I boomeranged back over there uh, for a new role. So I'd been gone for a few years trying some growth marketing stuff. Worked at an agency for a minute. Um, and when I got pulled back, I was asked to, uh, to stand up their very first customer community mm-hmm. and their very first, uh, customer advisory board. So I was in a community mind, co- community minded community role. Like that was my whole world all of a sudden while simultaneously the community of practice, AKA the Mo pros and marketing ops, what is now marketing ops.com, uh, that was growing. And so I was able to sort of experiment in two very different types of uh, communities on what works where right like so you're like i see both these worlds like i can marry the two yeah 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 and i was like oh okay like i don't want this to be a dead space for people like let's make it valuable and so here's what we're trying on the customer community side here's what we're trying on the client advice customer advisory board side um let me see what i could try to like create here in the community of practice that sort of mirrors some of those things and, and figure out what works where right 
And eventually I was given the opportunity to go work for another startup and spend a third of my time uh, working on what is now marketingups.com. So we're, we've only been marketingups.com for a year. We launched it in June last year. So, you know, it's been fun. Yeah. Uh, and what was the impetus for, for, for launching that or for, for creating like a full, like, it seems like a full like resource hub that's a website. So it's like beyond the Slack community into that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. Uh, the intention is that it is a community of practice, right? So we are focused on providing uh, access and enablement for uh, professionals in this field or professionals who are looking to enter the role of marketing and arguably revenue operations. Um, I often, you know, say if you want to head into RevOps, uh, you're best suited to do that if you've come from a marketing ops background. Part of that has to do with the fact that you're looking across the entire funnel of uh, you know acquisition down through renewal, but um, ultimately the the need that I feel was there, and the only reason I really feel that is because I asked the community. Right? Like I was like, what do we? What should we be doing more? That's like of? the ultimate cheat code: asking your community, asking your customers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one thing that I like for anybody who watches this now or later. Um, I, I have to say, like. Building community is no different than building a product, right? Like as a product manager, um, I, well, I can't say it's no different, but it's there's a lot of similarities. As a product manager, when you're trying to build a feature set or, or what have you, you're often, you have a hypothesis on a problem or a pain point, and then you're trying to validate that hypothesis by talking to potential end yep. users, right? Um, and ultimately, like when you're looking to build your community, I think the, the one thing that uh, brands get wrong when they're doing this or even other communities of practice is that they like hypothesize to their in their own bright brains and their own teams. And then they never actually reach out and say, hey, would this matter to you? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just go talk to the people that you want to build this for and validate it. Right. Like um, and that that was what we did. Right. It's, we kept asking, what should we be doing more of? What do you need? And uh, as the request came in, I kept saying, okay, let's try to figure out how to do that now. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I mean, I think like what you're getting at too is like, it's almost like a, a core principle of growth in general. It's like, yeah, talk to your target audience, see what problems they have, fix their problems, whether that's through a community, through a product, through content, whatever. And like, that's what people gravitate towards and what helps you culture yeah. or grow, you know? Yeah, un undoubtedly. Like I, um, I, I think that's part of the like one of the hardest things about community is, other than the fact that like building community is incredibly difficult, um, is that depending on what we're talking about, right? If you're building a community for a brand, um, where does it live? <laughs> is it under marketing? Is it under product? Is it under like uh, sort of like knowledge it like whatever right like service right or if it's um, a devrel company like is it under engineering yeah 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 and so um you know to the point that you, that you just made right of like hey it's sort of like um, a growth mindset to be able to just like talk to your customers it's easy to feel like your community like should just become a part of marketing and sort of that growth that growth system and i'm not saying that that's the wrong place for it I'm just saying that you have to exercise caution because you have to, um, as, as you're building that community for the first time, you either need to lean all the way in and be like really clear about the fact that like, hey, like you are going to hear about our brand. <laughs> this is a community for us to, you know, increase advocacy or knowledge about our company or whatever, um, or go the other direction and just focus on like, what are the topics and value that, you know, that these folks want to hear from us um, and try to steer clear of tying it to KPIs that are related to like sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and do you have like a rule of thumb? It. Yeah. Do you have like a rule of thumb for like, okay, this is the business objective. Like this is where community should lie. Should it be its own like spin out thing? Or is it like every company is bespoke and it just depends? Uh, uh, yeah. Any, any yeah. kind of like guidance there? Yeah. <laughs> much, much like uh, marketing ops, the answer is always, it depends. Um, it, you know, people will say like, oh, can you send this email? It's like, well, it depends. <laughs> like, what are you trying to do? Yeah. Um, yeah community, it really depends. Uh, I think the, 
the model or like the framework that was popularized by CMX. Um, for those of you that maybe I'm sure a lot of you that are in community. Yeah, we were just have, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, so like the spaces model is a really good way to think about like, what is the intention of this community um, and why are we building it? And then that might end up uh, helping you place it inside of an organization. Right. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to solve for knowledge hub and support, you may want to have that under like customer success or the support sort of team. Um, but if it's about innovation and trying to come up with new features and all that other stuff, like maybe it lives under uh, product, right? Uh, so it, it just really depends on yeah. what your needs are and why you're building it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, switch topics for a little bit of a departure, I guess. It's just, um, you just have, a, you're in this unique a uh, unique background with having marketing ops and then also building out a community. And I'm wondering like how the two role, because like, I feel like community leads and uh, even like go to market leads, like really could rely on marketing ops quite a bit to make their lives easier, more efficient to show value. And I think like having that marketing ops background and like now going through the two different worlds of like starting from that and like relaying like what you know and like how to how to enable people on the community side like is there um what ways can can marketing ops and community folks like help like work together yeah uh it's that's a really good call out um i talked about this uh probably like a year or two ago on another session um at some point like if you're going to build your community um, I would say involve marketing ops as quickly as possible because they understand the current tech stack and the data that comes in, right? And as a community builder, there's probably a lot of information that you want to rely upon and you want to have access to in a way that is, is sort of purpose-built for you and your your needs, right? Um, so to, to give a more contextual example, it might be um, categorically, you've carved up certain channels for certain purposes and you want to be able to measure who's most active in you know certain channels and then tag them to say, oh, that's a XYZ expert, um, whether it's a feature set. In our case, it might be a marketing automation platform specifically, right? And so when I see that somebody is talking about so bridging my marketing ops sort of like skill set, um, we look for tools to say, okay, cool, I've identified that you are talking about HubSpot. So you probably need to be in the HubSpot channel in our Slack um, community, right? So we're using a tool to like automatically move them in there when they mention those terms and they can drop themselves out if they want, but mm -hmm. odds are if they're asking questions about it, they're going to want to be in a space full of other HubSpot uh, users, right? Yeah. And so, so you, um, yeah. yeah, so I think it's important to like look at like that type of capability. And as a community builder, you often, um, you have a lot more responsibility for sort of managing, maintaining, moderating your community to make sure that it's like safe and controlled and, you know, uh, people feel like they're welcome there. That's a big job. And it probably shouldn't be your responsibility to figure out how to make all the technology work on top of that, right? Um, and so I think, I think, trying to leverage those resources uh, as a marketing ops yeah. professional is, is like super important. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, there's like, a, there's a lot of service areas, especially depending on how you're defining community, if it's like just your Slack channel or if it's like the broader, like Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit conversations and, you know, having to, you know, navigate all that. And like the, I think it kind of speaks to like the, the change in direction of like the customer journey as well. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I, I kind of view it too as like, okay, the 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 way that you frame it, frame it just now is like, okay, this, I can I can kind of see this in the sense of like a marketing automation, like nurturing sense, but like you're doing it in like a different platform. So I'm wondering, like, if you have any tips or like for for navigating like all this crazy service area where you don't necessarily have someone's email. Um, some people call it like the dark funnel, but um, I'm curious, like how you how how the folks here can like tackle that, or how ops and mark and community can work together to tackle that. To, so just like trying to communicate with them when you don't necessarily have email addresses? Yeah, or just like group them into like different life cycle stages or like, you know, you said like one person was interested in HubSpot, <laughs> but like maybe you don't have the person's 
email address or you don't have a way to like push them into your marketing automation platform. I'm like curious of, you know, how you make sense of like all of this different uh, footprint of where like people can reach you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> one of them is like finding tools that like <laughs> help you with that. Right. Um, there's, there's quite a few of them out there. Um, you know, I think when it comes like for us in Slack, you know, we know we have their email address, even though it's like, oftentimes it's their personal email address. Right, right. Um, and so we can pipe that back into, we use HubSpot as our tech stack. Um, and so we, we sort of, for a while I was using, um, Zapier to just like fetch records as they came in and append mm -hmm. their, uh, their Slack ID and all this other stuff. Um, but now we've got some automation tools um, where we're using, um, it's a product called Atomic right now uh, to do some, some nurturing uh, as people are sort of coming into our, our world, um, whether that's on sort of email nurtures or as people join Slack for the first time, we're like sending them a cadence of sort of welcome messages and getting them to sort of engage in that manner. Um, and then we're piping a lot of that data back in to HubSpot uh, in terms of like, when was the last time they were active and then building workflows. This is only a more recent sort of effort for us, but we're going to build workflows that say like, Oh, looks like you haven't been around for the last, you know, 15 days, you know, have you been on vacation? Was there a big marketing ops project you were working on? Like, we'd love to have you come back and you know tell us about what you're, what you're working on kind of a thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. one thing you're, you're kind of getting at too is just like, the, using Zapier is using these different tools is like moving data back and forth. And the, yeah. the tech stack from, you know, when we were getting started is not just like someone visits your website, they fill out a form and you have like full linear path to, to understanding this or having this relationship with someone. Um, so I'm curious to if like how you've been, maybe it's like a trends from the community of like how you've seen the, the tech stack evolve and like, what's, what's the, what are like the critical pieces of it right now and, and how that's like changed uh, in the last mm. you know, five or 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. Question. <laughs> it's time. a big question. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a big question for sure. But uh, I think, I think in general, there were a lot of like, there weren't as many tools before. Um, and, and it really depends on where you're building your community. Right. Like uh, I, I, I'll be totally honest. Like I've been very um, open about the fact that like slack really isn't a community product right it's just not like mm -hmm. like slack will fight me on that there's there's actually like team members that i know at slack that are like come on yeah it is like it can be i'm like look i get it it can be and we're certainly getting value out of it but you know when you think about um unfortunately we just it's cost prohibitive for us to pay for it which means the knowledge that is shared here is lost after 90 days Right. Um, mm -hmm. And so if you're building it in a forum, that tech stack could look very different. Um, and I think the products that are in market today to enable community, you know, whether it's Mighty Networks or, you know, all, I don't know, there's, there's so many of them, right? We don't, mm -hmm. we have Circle. I Circle, think. yeah. 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 We've, we've used Circle before. I used a different one before that and I migrated. We have the forum, but like nobody, Nobody uses it because so many people are like on Slack already all the time. It's just easy for them to toggle away from their work. Yeah. Right? Do you think people have like a fatigue over like, I can't get, I can't onboard into like one more new thing. It's just like, let me use the tools that I'm used to working with. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, um, I, I think that it's, it's, I've, I've already got a million and one tabs open on my computer, right? <laughs> which I collapsed for the purposes of this, this chat today, but um, having another one that's a forum um, that's open feels like it's sort of lost, right? Like it's not in front of me. And so I think like that ease of use of, okay, well, if I'm using Slack for my team to collaborate and talk and you know all that other stuff, like I'll just toggle over here when I'm having a problem and I'll go ask these thousands of people like, hey, have you ever tackled this problem before? Um, and I think there's there's a bunch of that, right? And and I have like, you should see my Slack. It's like there's the bar is like stacked <laughs> with like other <laughs> panels that I'm in. <laughs> so like, okay. So you can get fatigued, right? Like there's there can be a lot of noise um, and curating the way in which you want to engage with your your constituents, your community, whatever ones you're in. Um, is probably an important step to take. At first, you get really excited and you join all of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, eventually had, you figure out where your clicks are. <laughs> yeah, we had, it's, it's funny, it brings up this, um, 
we had this survey for, you know, how to know, it's kind of like a Myers-Briggs test for DevRel people. And like one of the questions on it was like, you've, you've exhausted the amount of space in the left-hand column of the number of Slack communities that you're in. And like, you have to like, you know, the, hit the button, hit the, I don't even know what it's like because I'm not in that many. I'm like an eight, which like doesn't, it doesn't uh, truncate for me. But mm. um, I think that's a question or that's like a sign that you're um, an advocate and like trying to join and, and, and uh, learn from all these different communities. So that's a really, that's a clever, uh, clever like benchmark to try to ask yeah. about. I mean, I like, I don't even, I can't even count right now. If I tried to count, you'd all be like, stop counting, Mike. <laughs> like, that's how many are on my feet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it kind of begs the question too of like, do you need to like, um, do you need to prune that or do you need to like do some hygiene around that? Cause like, I'm sure you're not, you can't be you possibly be active in all of those, but maybe you are. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely not like, uh, the, the secret of, uh, about me and my involvement with marketing ops and the marketing ops community is that like, it is, I work more than full-time, um, but I don't, I don't get paid by what we're doing in the business, right? Uh, I have to, to keep the lights on, I do consulting work right now. Uh, I would, I would hope that one day I could do only marketing up stuff. Uh, but the reality is, is that we're taking everything and we're investing back in the community and that's what it is. And so um, I cannot be active in a whole bunch of other spaces. It's like, there's the there's the work that I got to do, and then there's the marketing app stuff called community, and that's it. So yeah, yeah, no, I we'll probably plug, should go prune all of that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll plug for for joining both marketing ops and to use Mike for consulting services. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to use me for consulting services, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is just it's sort of the nature of how how things are right now. So. Yeah, before um before like jumping turning to the audience and like for the folks on here like please enter some uh, questions into the chat for Mike um, we can go into some of like I see some some juicy ones in here but um I did want to ask you around um since you you know you have this large group of uh, marketing ops folks um, and probably have like a good pulse of like what's going on in that world um, wanted to ask you around like the the common like challenges um challenges that you've seen i mean i guess you can take it either way like common challenges you've seen with within like the community leads or like marketing ops i guess is maybe more interesting uh for marketing ops for me but you know however you want to take it um, i'm curious like what's what the pulse of the the state of things is right now yeah, yeah right now um so you know we're fortunate to do an annual research project um that tries to get a pulse check on what we refer to as the state of marketing operations professionals. Um, the the bulk of that data for this last year will be released at our event in November. So um, some of that information will be shared there, but I would say some of the takeaways are um, being strained by like team size, budget, and like just general sort of like limitations on how do I actually manage my day to day. Um, and then the, you know, everybody was talking about doing more with less kind of that messaging was out for quite a few months as all the layoffs were happening in the market. Um, the, the reality is, is like, that's sort of always been the, the challenge of a marketing operations professional is like, how do I maximize my efficiency from the, the most limited number of like uh, technologies that I could that I could possibly like uh, out of a uh, seven or 10,000 or whatever the number is now. 11. <laughs> 11 does. Oh, God. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was, I was just on the a, range, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was on, uh, I was, I was just chatting with um, Scott the other day. I was like, it's 11,000 now. Like, this is crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's a lot of what's happening just like sort of up a level um, in marketing revenue operations in general is this like shift to, uh, I, I tend to refer to it. I'm not, the, I'm certainly not the only person that does this, um, but I, I use the term architecture uh, a lot. And so it's like, what is your go-to-market sort of tech stack? And what are the data points that you need to pay attention to? And what's that orchestration look like? Um, mm -hmm. There's a very new world of orchestration around your marketing and go-to-market tech stack that is a different hat that has to be put on um, than we have, than we've seen in the past. And so I think there's a lot of sort of pressure coming from the market at large um, on not just consolidating, but like 
really okay like big ops like scott brinker talks about big ops data like you know your your cdps and your warehouses mm -hmm. these kinds of things like who's really gonna own this stuff moving forward um especially with the advent of ml and ai and and i really do think that the I'm really just echoing a lot of other smart people that are saying this um, in the community. Uh, Paul Wilson specifically talks a lot about like, it is marketing operations professionals responsibility to sort of usher in a new era of, look, your AI and ML is gonna be terrible if you cannot master the art of quality data in, data out. Because you can train uh, AI and machine to do whatever you want, but if the data is crap, it's like then you yeah. get bad outputs right um yeah so well I, we've made it i point. think we made it like a record 30 minutes without the mention of ai so that's that's <laughs> great <laughs> <laughs> but yeah very very well done um uh i uh in 100 like you know if ai is trained on bad data like what good is it uh well, actually if one of us it's funny we had this like uh marketing campaign at segment that we did um being a cdp it was like we we had this whole campaign around what good is bad data and um that certainly like resonates now um yeah anyways side sidebar there uh nice. I, I have some follow-up questions to to um to your answer just there so um you know i, I with all of these like different d data sources um and like having either like a data warehouse or some source of truth for data and like how do you how do you get the quality data into the hands of the people who care about it um are you using like a reverse etl are are you just sending all the data and then filtering it yourself like through brute force like do you have any like I, i'm sure everyone does it differently but do you have any like good heuristics for like what what a good approach to like handle and make sense of like all the data that's coming at us yeah, I, I don't know that I have a perfect answer for this. Uh, I, I mean, in truth, we're a small enough organization that like I just can't afford to have some of the orchestration layers that um, some other organizations might be able to. Right, invest in. right. You don't have a data um, data engineering team, probably. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're not. the data engineering team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, we are a team of like five part timers. Is is really the answer um, mm -hmm. uh, at marketingapps.com. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it's you know when you talk about like getting quality data into the hands of those that need it um first and foremost like what is the data that they need and those those definitions of like how your unique business works um and and what someone on a particular team needs at a given moment in a customer journey sort of transaction right um really matters yeah. and those conversations they like they are conversations with real humans, right? So like you have to uh, uh, just deploy talent into your organization. Hopefully it's a marketing ops or revenue operations professional um, that is really meant to try to align the business needs with the customer journey, with the uh, enablement pieces that go alongside each one of those teams uh, along the way. And then once they're able to collect what, what is quality data and which data is needed where, um, you then move into a, a phase of, okay, what tools could help us do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not going to be just Salesforce and just HubSpot in all right, likelihood, right? right? Um, yeah. It'll probably be like, uh, I, I think I, I, I have no affiliation uh, other than the fact that they've been a sponsor to us before, but like, I think Syncery is really onto something super special there. Um, in terms of like an orchestration layer that's changing the way you might think about your the way you use data. Equally, I know that there's a number of other players in the space as well. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't know about all of them. <laughs> uh, I happen to know about that one. And I think like you'll find um, once you've established the, the what and the how within your team, you then need to like go shopping for the, the right solution, which I, is very different, right, than what we've been experiencing in the last decade, which was like, you started the conversation this way, like, oh, we bought this thing called Marketo, like, yeah, yeah, to do yeah. It. <laughs> like it's, it's very much, okay, don't invest in a tool until you know what you're going to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I, yeah, very much like, I, I was going to uh, parrot back that, uh, 
that uh, that approach is like okay let's figure out like what we actually need and then like tooling yeah we could probably use three or to five to a dozen solutions that will do the same thing for us but like let's figure out like what's best for our end users and like for business impact first and unblocking everyone that we need to unblock and then like the technology kind of comes after yeah yeah and 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 again like i can't stress enough you know there's a lot of folks that are like oh you know here we are mentioning ai again um <laughs> a lot of folks are like oh is ai going to take over like a you know these kinds of jobs these ops jobs um in some ways yes but in a lot of ways no like but you need to know the data that you want and yeah like, like and the process right yeah like, <laughs> uh and why <laughs> and like who needs it and you know like uh, a good example is my my client that I'm working with, uh, we found out that their, let's call it their lead, like uh, BDR, right? SDR type of the head of that team. We found out that they're like manually routing the leads and like qualifying them and like enriching the record to make sure it goes to the right territory. <laughs> we were like, holy moly, right? Like, no, we don't need you to manually do that. There's a way to solve for this problem. Like we are going to like incrementally improve like dramatically <laughs> improve your personal situation and the cus the company's like go to market operations because we can remove that manual process but that doesn't happen unless someone goes and like, has a conversation like tell me about what you're doing what's your day in your life look like right so they're doing things that don't scale that's for sure yeah oh <laughs> uh, okay so i'm gonna um we have a, a few more minutes here and um, I'm going to turn it over to the audience. Um, and there was this question that came through, which I'm sure you get a lot um, let's see, from Venia. Uh, so uh, number one integration issue you're finding uh, in companies um, to, to kind of connect the community and marketing team data together. Uh, and then there's like a secondary part of this question of, um, the attribution problem, you know, this, of course, you're going to get an attribution uh, question in a marketing <laughs> <laughs> webinar. Uh, the yeah. attribution problem is so frequently brought up, but it feels like more of a symptom. Can you talk more about what underlies these collaboration issues? Okay, so what's the number one integration issue you're finding in companies? And, and we can take it from that one first. Yeah. yeah, like between the community and marketing team. Um, look, I, I think that I think the number one issue is that the community and marketing team are not actually communicating at all, like on the same page. Um, I think that, you know, I know there's organizations that do this really well. Um, but when I like, you know, perfect example, I was out at uh, the, my last role before I ended up focusing so much of my effort here on marketingops.com. Um, I was rolling into the client success organization, building out that customer community. And um one of the things that came up sort of by accident <laughs> was I was talking to them, the, the now marketing ops person that had my old job. And uh, this individual says to me, oh, by the way, like we're about to do this like massive import into, um, into our product, our SaaS product. It's going to be like mm. 10,000 users, right? Big company signed on. And I was like, I'm glad that I'm here. Cause like now, like on the community side, I want to think about like, how do we sort of push certain people into the right spaces in our forum. Right. Um, but simultaneously, like the client success team and, uh, and, and all of them, we knew this information was coming in on the client success side, but the marketing team, uh, like they had no idea that this was about to happen. So they're, they're like, uh, subscription <laughs> where you get picked, like you get charged for the number of oh, like, yeah. records Contacts in your HubSpot yeah, database, yeah, yeah. right? Like, oh, that's a problem, <laughs> right? So like, uh, I think, you know, that alignment cross-functionally on like, how are these, these organizations trying to communicate to each other sometimes about mission critical things that could impact the literal costs to your business um, are just lost because like there isn't some sort of like regular cadence of what's happening uh, in the organization. That being said, I also think like marketing, um, there's community knows a lot about, depending on how you build your community, you often know a lot about the problems um, and depending on the lens that you're trying to look at, the information that's coming into your community. So like maybe there's themes of questions that are coming up. That is like no different than getting on a call with a whole bunch of your customers, recording those with a gong, and then passing some of that product feedback back to your product feedback team so they can make improvements to your product. Cut, like um, communities need to be doing the same thing, right? Like 
we should have some sort of like feedback know, like mechanism a, to the yeah, rest like of the a feedback yeah. loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where it's like, okay, thematically, here's what we're seeing. You know, these are the things that are happening. And therefore, if you move some of those themes up market, up funnel, right, you might be able to like start mm -hmm. pulling people down funnel a little bit easier because you're touching on the things that matter to them. Right. But like there's a disconnect there. Uh, and then attribution. Okay. So like Maybe I can help like frame this a little bit more too, is like, um, yeah. I think part of the question or, or like the underlying um, question beyond the question and many, I'd like correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, is kind of like, how do you, how do you show that like the efforts that are happening on the community side of things, how do you attribute that that is making an impact? Because um, mm -hmm. I know that that question comes up a lot and it's like, okay, maybe this like started off as a, you know, they heard about us through a referral and then they came into the committee, but then like, they did a Google search for our name and like marketing attribution is like, oh, this is, you know, Google search attribution and like community gets no credit. So like, how do you like, uh, you know, bridge that gap? Yeah. Um, the, the way we're doing that is through a, how'd you hear about us? Uh, mm. like self-reported attribution type thing. Yeah. yeah. Like self-reported. Um, and then we, we have this very, I have to give all the credit to Ian Shields who built it for us in our HubSpot portal, um, but we route and normalize the inputs from that to categories. Um, and so we can see very plainly, like there's a very uh, stark difference between the way HubSpot interpreted the acquisition mm -hmm. of that record versus the, the self-reported um, version of that. And so I think like that has helped us tremendously um, as, a, as a community understand like how people are hearing about us. I think equally would help other B2B SaaS or B2C businesses really understand like where, where that's coming from. Um, the other piece is uh, like, I don't know. I think, I think the self self-reported attribution thing is probably the most low hanging fruit opportunity. You, you, you may get pushback from your marketing team on adding another form uh, field to your form, but it's like, you how much will need it? If they didn't yeah. have that intent to fill that out anyways, like, was it really there if they're going like, right. to drop off from a question like that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, and then I think, unfortunately, it, the answer is, I know like uh, any of like, this is probably not, not music to your ears, but it depends. Um, like if you have built a community that's meant to help resolve support tickets, then you're measuring the impact of your community's ability to reduce the volume of cases that are created. Right. Um, and so like, that's a very different measure of success than a marketing measure. So it really, you know, it really depends. Um, one thing for those of you that might be running a, uh, like a customer community or something for like a B2B organization, um, I said at one point, wouldn't it be great if like, we just had, you know, if you got a partner motion, right. Someone that could like be a partner to a reseller service provider. It's like, let's, let's let our partners be the experts in the room. Right. And enable them to like showcase the fact that they can really help our community, like, uh, get the most out of our product. And, and then by enabling them, not, you know, you give them a little spotlight for like maybe a month at a time. It's great marketing for them, quote unquote. At the same time, you're enabling your customers, right, to, to get more success out of your thing. And then if that partner ends up bringing in deals, like, oh, look at that, you made an impact to the business. Um, and so a lot of it has to do with programming. Like what programs are you instrumenting to drive results, whatever the results are that you're looking to drive? Um, I left Maven Link before we ever got to implement that program, but I was really excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me. the, that's like tangentially like the program I'm running here is like, okay, let's find experts like yourself and uh, yeah. get them to like talk about, you know, uh, something that is beyond our subject matter expertise and then like leverage or ride your coattails. So it's like kind yeah. of similar kind of play, right? Yeah. yeah and I, yeah, I know you definitely. do that a lot with the podcast and like pulling in other opinions from other people and expertise from other people. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, I, I want to learn from other people that know how to do something better than me, which is exactly what a community is all about. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think it's perfectly fine to, you know, let your business benefit from that, but do it in a way that just makes sense, right? Like enable everybody, just figure out, like, ask yourself the question, is this a rising tide, right? Does everybody come up with it? If it's yeah. not, then maybe think about doing a different program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, last question here. I think last question from Danny. Let's see if any, anything else trickles in. But uh, this one is, 
um, what data, we were talking about data earlier, what data from the community has been most help, helpful for scaling? We kind of talked about this about topics maybe too earlier, but. Yeah, yeah. I think um, in general, it's it's sort of like categories. Um, so as people are, are talking about certain um, tools or problem sets, like the term lead scoring might come up, lead routing might come up. Um, that information and being able to like sort of sift through that and create the tool set to like cat like tag somebody based on that discussion point. That's really been uh, tremendously helpful for us in creating opportunities to do um, uh, tailored programming, right? Um, so if we're going to run a webinar with like a partner or something like that, like a sponsor of our community, we'd be like, well, we sort of know who cares about this, right? Um, and then we, we often give them an out, right? Like, oh, we think you care about this, but if you don't like click here, don't unsubscribe from us, like click here and update what you actually care about. Uh, and, and then we'll try to avoid sending you stuff you don't care about, right? And so I think that piece of data has been probably the most helpful. It's around sort of like this idea of um, topic uh, clusters, or something. like topic clusters, that kind of thing, right? Um, uh, tagging tagging the groups by their sort of interests is really is really what matters for us and then activity right just like general you know I, in in our case we're using slack as all of you know and we're looking for who's sort of the most active who's used the most emojis like these kinds of things and sometimes we do that just to have a little bit of fun right like uh at the right. end of the first year where we had really experienced a lot of growth i like picked you know, I, I celebrated like three community members. One of them like was the person who used the most emojis for the last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the other was like the person who answered the most by like on threads, right? Like, um, it was it was pretty fun, and and they liked. Celebrating. Yeah, I love that idea. It's like an end of uh, or it's like your um high school graduation like awards or whatever. You kind of <laughs> yeah, <think. laughs> yeah. It's like uh, you know like some random thing that you get recognized for, but you know that like that's cool. Like they, they, you know, they're like, I'm active and they're celebrating the fact that I'm active. Right. So um, yeah, use your, yeah. use that data because it can actually help create additional sort of social virality and, um, and someone feels a little closer to your communities because you're celebrating them. For sure. For sure. Cool. Well, I think that that does it for us, Mike. Um, I, uh, if you can let people know like, what's the, what's the, what's the call to action here? Um, uh, is it a, uh, join uh jo join marketing ops community like reach out to you like what, what should people do um i guess you know uh for us if you want to learn more about marketing operations and you've got some challenges in your tech stack um you know we've got uh, 4600 experts that are constantly dealing with challenges day in and day out um so it's free to join you can come hang out with us i would say if you want to learn in a more intimate space uh, i will shamelessly plug that we have mopsapalooza coming up in november so we would love to have you there it is in anaheim california uh, right behind disneyland and it's three days of intimate learning so um we would be thrilled to have uh you know four or five hundred folks in a room talking shop well it's in like four different rooms but you know breakout sessions all the great stuff um so we'd love to have you there too and uh yeah, that, that's really it. If, if you want to come hang out, we would love to have you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks again, Mike. We'll follow up with the recording and everything. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. Yeah. Thanks everybody. <laughs>